What's going on, everyone? Keith Niebuhr and Corey Bender of Gators Online to talk some Florida Gators football recruiting. Corey's smiling. I'm smiling. I know everybody in Gator Nation is smiling because this is a huge, huge day for the Florida Gators who have just picked up a commitment from five-star defensive lineman L.J. McCray of Daytona Beach Mainland who just announced his verbal commitment to Billy Napier and company over Florida State, Auburn, Georgia, in Miami, a huge, huge verbal commitment for the Gators. We're talking about the number one defensive line recruit in the country for on three and the number eight overall prospect in the nation. This guy is legit. This guy is a day one impact player. It sends a signal across the nation that Florida Gators football recruiting is back in a big way. He is the third five star on the commitment list now joining DJ Lagway at quarterback, and Xavier Phil Samine, the safety from Texas. Corey, monumental pickup for the Florida Gators. What are they getting in L.J. McCray? Yeah, outstanding size, Keith. Six, six and a half, about 270 pounds, but also a really good motor to go along with it. I mean, this is a guy that explosive at the snap of the ball, really plays for all four quarters. Um, his backside pursuit is outstanding as well. When you kind of combine that, it's no surprise that he's a five-star prospect. But, you know, when reviewing his film again this week, also violent hands, a guy that's just very aggressive. Um, he makes you pay. If your offensive lineman, you're lax at day school for a snap, you're going to probably be a part of uh, L.J. McCray's highlight reel. So, yeah, the, the things that stick out to me, man, just aggressive, relentless, outstanding size, and a motor that goes for days. So he's really a total package on the edge. We have both had the opportunity to watch L.J. McCray play, and the word that comes to mind as I look back to that night where I watched him in person and, and then went through his video highlights from that game, Corey, this guy is disruptive. And uh, he plays uh, six foot six, 275 pounds, but he plays – he's very nimble. He has great change of direction. He has uh, the ability to get skinny in space despite being a pretty big guy. He can keep his pad level low. Uh, he can just do so many things. He gets after the quarterback when his mind is sharp, because it's not always sharp for every defensive lineman on every play. They're getting hit play after play by one, two, three, four guys. But when he is really set up to go on a play, when he is ready, when he is locked in, he's very difficult to tangle with. Corey, let's talk about how Florida got this done. I mean, you know, the yeah. Florida fans in recent years have not seen a lot of significant recruiting wins prior to Billy Napier uh, getting to Florida. Now, just this cycle alone, again, DJ Lagway, the five-star quarterback, you beat out Southern Cal and you beat out Clemson. Xavier Phil Samid, the five-star safety, elite, elite wins there, big wins for the program. But you just beat out Georgia, FSU, Miami, and Auburn. Georgia being the one that's probably going to be the biggest attention no. getter, Corey, because the Bulldogs have done such a great job in recent years of going into the Sunshine State, much to the chagrin of Florida Florida State and Miami fans, and gotten some really talented defensive linemen to come to Athens. The headliner obviously being Jalen Carter out of Apopka. You know, I knew when that happened that things weren't the same in Gainesville. That's a guy yeah. that used to never get away. And when yeah. he got away – it made you start thinking, okay, where are things headed on the recruiting trail in Florida? They have to land guys like that to be an elite program. L.J. McCray is in that same ilk. He is he is of yeah. that caliber. I don't know if he's going to be as good. We don't know. He may end up being better. We don't know that either. But you have to land those types of players. You've got to be better on the interior. Florida's future, if Florida's going to make a climb and, and get back to the top of the college football world, Corey, they are going to have to get bigger and better on the offensive and defensive lines. And L.J. McCray is the elite player that can help you do that. All right, It's just one piece, but it is a massive piece. But again, Corey, how did they get this done? We talked on our preview show uh, mm -hmm. yesterday about you know, some of the things that gave Florida fans hope, starting with relationships and his desire to – you know, or his, his him being okay with being part of a, a building process and all that. But to you, what were a couple of the biggest factors in, in Florida getting this done? Yeah, I think proximity, Keith, that's the biggest thing. I mean, Florida's the power five program and, you know, finalists closest to his home. And obviously they resulted with the most visits too. So they always say attractive visits. So that, that's the thing that starts with me right at the top. And then also, obviously, they're getting my campus, but the relationships are very strong. And, you know, Austin Armstrong, Mike Pearson, Sean Spencer, Billy Napier, I mean, the list goes on. This kid got the red carpet treatment for, you know, really almost for the past year. And, uh, you know, obviously, that that's even more when you get on campus. So that home-like feel, that familiarity, obviously playing close to his loved ones, 
that's a big thing. But it also, Keith, we mentioned this too, you know, when you're talking, when I asked him a few weeks ago, sum up your interest in Florida A to Z, what sticks out the most? And, you know, he mentioned that rebuild project about how it reminds him of mainland. And that was the first thing out of his mouth when he mentioned his interest in Florida. And obviously I'm sure there's other stuff too, the relationships like we mentioned, stuff like that. But that shows right here, obviously with him now being in the class, you know, obviously he backed up his words and he really meant that he wants to be a part of turning the, turning the corner game Florida back on top. Yeah. We should point out his sophomore season at mainland, that program went five and five as we, as we do this show right now, I think they're seven and oh, I might be missing a win, but they're unbeaten. And and really, yeah. Back to that topper echelon of high school football in the state of Florida, where mainland has been a lot through the years. That is a historically strong program. They've done a fantastic job over there. Uh, but again, five and five just a couple of years ago, and he was a central figure in mainland, mainland making a move back up to that top level in the yeah. state of Florida. Relationships with the staff. You mentioned his uh, his bond with Billy Napier, also close, as you said, with the defensive line coach, Sean Spencer. You'd expect that. He's a defensive lineman yeah. with the defensive coordinator, Austin Armstrong. But Mike Peterson is a guy you mentioned, and maybe he was one of the unsung heroes. Not maybe. He definitely was. He coaches yeah. the outside linebackers and edge. Uh, edge players. And and LJ McRae said recently in in an interview with on three that I'm really close with that guy. That might be the guy I'm closest with at Florida. They just have this similar personalities. Well, Mike Peterson was an all American linebacker at Florida. uh, And so that goes a long way. Uh, You know, that relationship went a long way in helping Florida land LJ McRae, but also it's interesting that he said uh, why, why Mike Peterson was recruiting him uh, because he said that, he considered him sort of his position recruiter. Well, isn't that interesting? Because this guy's six foot six, 275 pounds. Does that mean he's also going to be seeing some action at edge? It probably does. It probably does. He's that versatile. It's a big recruiting tool, obviously, too, yeah. Corey, to tell a guy that we could play you here, 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 and here. But Mike Peterson, unsung here, another one. The guy we mentioned a little bit earlier, five star quarterback commit, LJ McCra- uh, LJ McCray, DJ Lagaway. Well, LJ McCray to- that's right. LJ McCray told. Everybody. He's told all of us. That guy has been in my ear. He sold Florida. Um, And also, they all officially visited together in June, uh, him and some of the other Florida commitments. It allowed them a chance to bond. Going into this announcement, Corey said, hey, I'd like to play with guys that or it it would be a fun thing to play with guys that I like and respect both as people and as players. So there were a lot of things working in Florida's favor here, Corey. Uh, But just a, a monumental win. You know, is it's maybe not Lagway, it's maybe not that because the quarterback is the face of your program. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, Corey, I'm going to ask you. I put this number two among Billy Napier's biggest recruiting wins at Florida. Where would you put it? Yeah, I mean, without having to listen from me, I definitely would put it up top two, top three for sure. And I, I think also, Keith, just in the reason being is Florida had a good D line class a cycle ago, and you're seeing some of those guys hit the field. In my opinion, I think Elgin McCray is just another step up. I think just obviously he's a guy who can be your day one rotation. And that's what, to me, kind of puts him over top of maybe some other guys in previous classes. I think when you see this guy, I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be a starter from day one, but what Keith mentioned too about him possibly playing edge, you see that six, six and a half, 270 pounds. You're like, well, he was going to be 300 pounds and he'll be an inside guy. You watch his film. I mean, this guy is explosive. He plays like he's much smaller. Like he's noted at the top about being skinny, fitting in the small little spaces. This guy, there's a reason why he's on three's number one ranked defensive lineman. He's a special cool. kid. Corey, you follow the NFL much closer than me, but I've seen all these comparisons, LJ McCray to, to guys that are that are playing football. He looks like Miles Garrett to me. Yeah, that's I, a good yeah, one. Same body, same motor. I mean, I, look again, I'm not saying he's gonna be as good as Miles Garrett, but I'm also saying he won't be. I mean, he's got a lot of things working in his favor. Corey, we should point out this is commitment number 22 for Florida. Uh, you've got a, a, a number number three class in the country. Uh, look, you got to hold on to guys. There's no question. You got people trying to pick at guys left and right. So we don't know what the final class is going to look like. But from this, uh, the fact that you're, you're landing an elite player, this is significant for two big reasons. One, he's really good and he is going to be he's got potential difference maker written all over him, but Corey, it's also the perception. It's Mm -hmm. a perception that Billy Napier and his staff can roll up their sleeves. And obviously NIL is always a factor in all this stuff, but Billy Napier and his staff can roll up their sleeves and get in there and and out muscle the big boys. All right. Hadn't seen enough of that in recent years. and, And that's why the product isn't as good as it has been. When a college staff tells you that to trust us and to trust our evaluations and, 
usually they say that stuff when they ain't getting guys, quite frankly. And we've yeah. seen it across multiple programs uh, over the last you know, few years. We saw it in Gainesville. Yeah. We've seen it at the other school I covered. And so this is the reality. When you're a top program, you're recruiting from the same pond as all the big boys. All yeah. right. Evaluations do matter. Don't, don't get me wrong. But who did you beat to land guys? And Florida just beat Georgia, which has been by far the best defensive line school in college football in the last five years. Just beat FSU, a rising program that's unbeaten as we record this. Uh, just beat Miami, your, your big rival in state, who you got to now play the next few years. And just beat Auburn. And we know Hugh Freeze. Uh, and we know his track record as a recruiter. In fact, when he was Ole Miss head coach, they landed the number one player in the country, Robert Kendici. Mm. This is a significant win, Corey. There's no question about it. Final thoughts before we let it, everybody out of here? Yeah, I guess I'll leave it with this. I think, you know, since Billy Napier arrived in Gainesville, you've seen, I mean, Kelby Collins when Florida beat out, you know, Alabama a cycle ago. You're slowly starting to see, come on, you know, as far as Kamari Wilson, when he was a recruit, you know, obviously we know how how big that recruitment was at the time with Georgia being involved. And Florida was in a lot of these battles, but now they're starting to win them. And obviously, you know, Kelby Collins, those guys are all Americans, high four-star guys. LJ McCray is number one as position. You know, like you said, the two-time national championship uh, champions are obviously right there, FSU Miami. And I think also just the fact that they did, they're not undefeated. The fact that I think the biggest thing, like you said, Keith, it was the message to him from the start that really resonated. They backed up what they said. And he said this about Mike Norvell and he says about Billy Napier, this is them being great people. And I think obviously when you talk to Billy Napier, he is one of those guys that can kind of win the room over with parents and everything. So yeah, man, I, I, it's it's crazy. We're finally here. He's in the class, and I don't think he's a guy that's probably going to be looking around too much either. Never say never. We don't know how recruiting yeah. is, obviously. It's, we're still about two months away from sign day, but I think he's a guy that should be pretty much locked in with this class. You know, most of the hay's in the barn right now, but you got your yeah. number one QB target. Yeah. You got your number one defensive line target. You got your number one safety target. You've got some pretty good players in this class. Still some work to be done. Still some yep. work to be done. But again, if games are won and lost in the trenches, then that just adds to the significance of landing LJ McCray. But that will do yep. it. If you like what yep. we're doing here at Gators Online, I'm looking at my shadow. I'm getting distracted by my own shadow back there. If you like what we're doing, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and don't forget to go to GatorsOnline.com right now or anytime. $1 for one month. $1, get your foot in the door. One Indeed. month of the best coverage. Team Intel, recruiting Intel, Team Insight, uh, recruiting profiles, and also the what we think is the best message board community uh, that anywhere in Gator Nation. So for Corey Bender, I'm Keith Niebuhr. This was Talking Gators Recruitment. LJ McCray is a Gator. Have a good weekend, everybody. Enjoy it.